Hey, this is Saf Levavi from LinkedInEarth.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a pretty awesome jazzy blues tune, which is the theme tune of the PC game Leisure Suit Larry. Now, it doesn't matter whether you know the game or not. Um, what matters is that this is a pretty awesome tune. It's a pretty standard blues tune with a small jazzy twist to it. Um, so I've arranged it into finger style for you to learn um, and I'm gonna play it for you first so you can hear how it goes and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick and learn exactly how to play this with tabs on the screen and everything. So first goes like this. So as you've seen, this is a pretty standard blues theme tune, um, a blues tune in E. It's got E, it's got A7, it's got a B7, and it's also got F sharp minor for a second there, leading you to the B7. Um, and the B part is a small, a, a very short tune in C sharp minor. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, theory, with chord theory, E major and C sharp minor are relative chords. They're relative minor and major. Um, without getting too much into theory, uh, the reason is because the E major scale and the C sharp minor scale both have the same notes, the exact same notes, they only begin and end on different notes. The E major scale begins on E and ends on E, C, major, C sharp minor begins on C sharp, ends on C sharp, but they have the same notes between them. Anyway, let's begin. Um, before we get into the picking pattern and all, let's just start. This is the first line. This is a chromatic, uh, a chromatic lick that leads you into the melody. Okay? Kind of a country a country uh, melody there reminds me of the of Jerry's breakdown. It's it's the same. Okay, it's just um, uh, first it's uh, it's harmonized differently, and second it's in a different context. This is country. This is blues. So just notice how the same lick, the, the exact same lick, can sound totally different. Okay, this is the lick. Now, it's one on the G string and an open E bass. Okay, this is an E major third, an octave apart, but um, still an E major third. You play, this is basically an E major chord uh, outline. Then, the same, uh, the same strings, G and the E bass on two, both are on two. Okay, and then you take this, move it up one fret to three. Okay, same thing. G string, E bass, both are on three. So zero and one, 
two and two, three and three. Pretty simple, right? Well, now it continues to be simple, but you need to employ the Travis picking technique. Now, if you don't know the Travis picking technique, then I suggest two things. One, first learn the melody, okay? Don't try to play the bass notes with the melody. Just learn the melody and play one bass note at the beginning of each bar. For example, okay, I played the bass note uh, with force this time so you can hear. That's how you need to play this. Then, after you got everything down, then play the bass notes. Then try to add the bass notes. Second thing, um, have patience, okay? Uh, if you don't know how to Travis pick, it takes time. It takes everyone time to learn the Travis picking technique because you have to have it automatic. If you have to think about the thumb, if you have to think about the one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two jumps, then you're gonna make mistakes because you can't think of the thumb, the fingers, and the second hand um, all at the same time. You have to have the thumb automatic. You have to forget about the thumb in order to play Travis Picking correctly. So just have patience, practice it, and um, I'll try to help as much as I can when we go through it. So, First melody line, okay, put the E chord on, you'll use the pinky for the second fret on the second string. First melody line is 0, 2 on the B string, okay, just 0, 2 on the B string with your pinky. Then the G string already on one because this is the E chord and then zero two on the B string again okay so it's zero two G string zero two got it now let's add the bass notes um, the motif here okay you need to hear it in your head um, the motif here is that the first two bass notes are along with melody notes. The third and fourth bass notes of the bar are separate from the melody notes. Okay, so it's da 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 da. Okay, let's play. Let's sing it faster. Da 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 da. Okay, that's what you need to hear. The first two melody notes are on the beat. The the, the first. Mm. The first half of the bar is on the beat, the second half of the bar is off the beat, okay? So that's what you need to hear in your head. It's going to repeat itself throughout the melody, and if you get that down, then you're settled, because you don't have to think about how the notes are arranged, okay? So try to hear that. Half of the bar is on the beat, half of the bar is off the beat, okay? That's the best I can do to help you. The rest is on you. So... Let's, sorry, that's the truth. Um, I can't lie to you and tell you that I'm gonna solve all your problems. You still have to practice. Um, I've been practicing this for almost a month now. So, um, let's play this with the bass notes. Bass, 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 bass. Okay, now without me talking. Got it? Bass, 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 bass. Got it? Again. Da, 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 da. Okay? Each clap is a bass note. By the way, what I play, uh, I usually like to use the D string as my second bass all the time. So uh, on E, it's gonna be the E string and the D string. Uh, and Let's say, for example, on A7, it's going to be the A string and the D string. Okay, so I always use the D string as my second bass. You don't have to. Uh, you can play the E string and the A string. Okay, on E, you can do this. Okay, I just like the big interval. Okay, I like to have a piano feel to it. So, um, instead of just... 
Okay? If that makes any sense. Um, again. Okay? Let's try to outline the bass even stronger. Okay? You hear that? Good. Next line. Okay, now this is just the G string, 0 to 0 on the E string, again with your pinky, and then the E string. Okay, so it's G, 0 to 0 on the B string, E string. Now the bass notes, again, same idea. bass notes with the melody, two bass notes without the melody. Bass, bass, bass. Da, 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 da. Okay? That's what you need to hear in your head. Um, the claps, not, not this. Um, anyway, next line. This time we change a chord into A7. Now use your second and third fingers, these two fingers, to put the A7 on because you're gonna need the first finger and the pinky. Um, okay, you need, you're gonna need the first finger on one and the pinky on three, so use your middle fingers. I said middle fingers, no comments. Um, anyway, the melody is this. Okay? It's two on the B string inside the A chord, the A7 chord. Let's just let him interrupt. Um, it's B string, E string, then one, two on the B string. Okay, again, that chromatic, uh, that chromatic motif, the approach note. Uh, one, two on the B string, and then the E string again. So it's two on the B string, E string. One, two on the B string, E string. Again, with the same motif. Okay? Bass. <clears throat> bass, 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 bass. Got it? Bass, bass, bass. closely because we're gonna have a chord change within the chord um, I, I know what I'm saying uh, the next lick is this one two on the B string zero two three on the E string then two zero on the E string got it one, two, zero, two, three, two, zero. Now, you begin on A7. Until you reach the G note. Then you take your first finger, put it on one on the A string. Yeah, on the A string, you turn this into a B flat diminished chord. This is a B flat diminished chord. So, then you play the B flat diminished note and then, okay, this. Zero is with the, uh, the D string this time. Okay, because you've changed rhythm. You did this. Okay, there's a rhythmic change to the melody. So the bass notes fall on different places. So, um, one, two, zero, two, three, B, 
base change to zero. Now let's just outline the bass notes. Bass, 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 bass. Okay? Da, 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 da. Okay? Again, you can just cut out the places where I sing and listen to the beats. Okay? Uh, you need, if you can't hear the beat in your head, you can't play Travis Picking. You have to hear the beat inside your head. That's the first law of not just Travis Picking, but of being a musician. Without the beat, there's nothing. The beat is more important than anything else. So, okay, slower. Okay, now everything becomes a bit easier, okay? Um, I said a bit easier. Let's play from the top, slow it first, then at full speed. E. A7. Okay. Now, um, I just want to add that I like to slide into the A7. You don't have to. I slide from 1 to 2. I like to slide. You don't have to. Just my thing. Now at full speed. Okay? Now this. Okay? Now, instead of doing this, I employed the Travis Picking um, technique a, a little differently. You don't have to. You can pick the E, uh, the E bass four times along with the E7 chord. Now this is an E7 chord, D7 shaped on four because D7 is on two. You just take it up two frets to E. Um, just and if that still doesn't make sense to you, just think which which letter comes after D, E. So that's the note that comes afterwards, and between the notes you've got D sharp, so it's D7, D sharp 7, E7, okay? Um, that's why this is an E7. Um, okay, now you can play the E bass note. You should play the E bass note. Now what I do here is I play uh, alternate bass notes. This is not a bass note, but I call it a bass note because I use the thumb to pick it. I pick the G string this time. I pick the E, G, E, G string. So I play strings one and two along with the bass notes. You don't have to. You can just pick the E bass four times uh, if you don't like the way this sounds. If you like this better, okay, then play it. Okay, both sound fine. I just like to keep the, the Travis picking going, so I just do this. Okay, makes no difference at all, except that maybe playing all four notes four times give it a really serious feel. But if you wanna give it the serious feel, go ahead, it's your version. I'm playing my version, you make your own version. Create your own guitar legacy. That's that's the slogan. Anyway, now it moves on to a different E7. This and again chromatic movement from E7 to E flat seven or D sharp seven and D7 and D flat seven. Okay, from seven to four, seven six. Five, four. Now you don't have to put the entire chord on. You just bar the seventh fret and add your pinky or the third uh, third finger, whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, and uh, you add it. Just checking the time. Um, and you add it on um, on nine on the B string. Okay. And you pick the A string 
the G string and the B string. Okay, strings two, three, and five. Okay, just outline the chord. Um, that's the jazzy twist I was talking about. Uh, approach notes, bass, uh, bass movements, and outlining the chords instead of playing the entire chord. Um, now you play strings two, three, and five, and you take this back from seven to six to five to four, same strings. You pick the same strings, okay? Okay? Don't forget the pinky. The pinky is on nine, eight, seven, six. Okay? The rest is the bar. Pretty easy, so it's... Now you bar the second fret, that's the F sharp minor I was talking about, um, and you do this. Okay, the, the line is, okay, that's the line. So it's uh, F sharp minor, just bar the second fret. Now the line is second string, first string with four, three, four, okay? Okay, so it's two on the B string, four, three, four on the E string. Now, again, I pick the E uh, string, the low E string, on F sharp, uh, the F sharp bass, and I pick the G string, okay, to outline the minor chord, okay, the fact that this is a minor chord. So, okay, and then this, this, becomes an F sharp minor at nine inside the ear. Okay, this for a moment. This becomes an F sharp minor at nine. So that's what why I pick the G string with my thumb uh, on this chord. So okay, um, this time I think it's necessary. So. It's just a half bar, that's it. Okay, so it's bass, bass. You pick both uh, bass notes with the G sharp note, the high G sharp note. Then it's this. It's B7, okay? Just your normal open position B7. And you play zero two on the E string. Okay? The bass notes are these. That's it. With the zero, then after the two. Okay, and you play the A and D strings. And then you play this. Just E again. Now you can, the melody note is the open E string, so you can either pick the bass and the E string, both E notes, or the first and second strings, or the first, second, and third string. Which, whichever sounds good to you. You can alternate, you can play different versions of this chord uh, each time you play around. And then you begin again. Okay? Uh, this comes around twice before the B part. So let's just repeat the ending. F sharp minor, add nine. I say add nine with the um, <laughs> with this silly rabbit ear movement um, because this isn't this chord. This is the melody. This is the chord. It's F sharp minor or F sharp minor seven. This is the melody line. It's not the chord. Okay, so it's technically F sharp minor add nine, but the add nine is on the melody. It's not in the chord. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. And then B7. Oh, right. 
the the E on the E chord. You pick the the E string first, and then actually you can you can do this. Okay, you can wait with the melody, or you can play the melody note before the bass, and then play the the bass note. Um, either play it on the one or before the one, before the bar begins. This sounds good. This sounds good. Both sound good. You choose your own version. You choose what you want to play. Okay? So, um, let's play this. Now that you know, you can listen better. without me talking. Now, second time, it's not, it's not this, it's the B part. Instead of this, you play this, okay? Instead of an upward chromatic motion, you play a downward chromatic motion, so you go to the higher E note on 7 on the A string, and you play this, you play just 7, 6, 5. Now this leads to 4, and C sharp minor is on 4, and then you play this. Okay? Just the C sharp minor chord. Again, not this, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers. It's thumb, thumb with fingers, thumb, thumb with fingers, thumb, thumb with fingers. Don't stop the Travis picking. I didn't do this to, to say good job, I said I did this to show you the thumb, because it's Travis picking. Okay? Now you do this one, two, three times. Last time begins the melody. So you just play the bass note and then you do this. Second bass note by itself. Okay, so it's two, three, four. Okay, without the chord. Now the melody. Um, sh you, you should play the melody with the chord still on. Look closely. Okay? Because you still need the Travis picking. So just take whichever finger you need to take off and put it right back on. Okay? Um, I'm gonna try to dissect this and tell you exactly what to do. Uh, but you should also look and think when you play. So, it's this. The, the D string was our first melody note, not this. Um, we play, let's play the melody first and then add the bass notes. It'll be a lot easier. Um, just stick with what we've done so far. On the G string, it's 6-5-6. Six, six. Now 5, of course, is with your second finger. So, uh, five, excuse me, six, five, six, okay? Uh, the six is with your pinky, which is, which should be already on. So it's six, five, six, then on the B string, uh, four, meaning that you still have the second finger off. And then you do 5-4-5 five, five with your uh, second finger on, off, on. Then the pinky on 7 on the B string. Okay, so it's... And then it's still uh, take the pinky off, but don't bring it back to the G string. Get it ready because you have to do this. 
okay? It's the E string on four, it's the bar. Then the pinky on eight on the uh, B string. This is again a chromatic movement, it's this. Okay, it's the same chromatic motif. So it's... Okay, and it's not just this. Um, it's seven and eight and um, the G sharp note, which is also on nine. So it's, it's all these notes. Um, the ear here is that chromatic line. So... Got it? Um, so again, G string, six, five, six. Um, e, um, B string, you try explaining this, this is not easy. Um, it's confusing, it's four, five, four, five on the B string, and then seven on the B string, four on the E string, eight on the B string, four on the E string again. Then you can put the pinky back and take the second finger off again because you need to, um, to do five, four on the E string. Okay, so it's... And then you put the chord on and play the entire chord because um, it's, um, it's the last beat of the bar. Now with the bass notes. Remember this? Bass, 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 bass. This is, um, even if you didn't catch that, this is easier than the A part because everything is on the beat. It's da 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 da. Got it? It's really straightforward. Every second note has a bass with it. It's a lot simpler than what we've learned before. Again, bass, 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 bass. Slower, fail, bass, 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 okay? We can make a song out of it. Uh, no. Now slower, without me saying bass, 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 bass. difficult line you're gonna have to learn in the B part. Then this. Okay, the la it's, it's G sharp 7, uh, pinky on, uh, on 7 on the, on the B string. Okay, so you've got a high 7th note. Now, um, you do this. Okay, it's seven, six, seven on the B string, E string on four, this is the bar, then seven, four on the B string. You take the pinky off, so it's seven, six, seven, E string, seven, four. Now, whenever I play the B string, I harmonize with the G string, you don't have to. Okay, I just find it nice. Again, you don't have to do that. Um, bass notes, again, straightforward. Okay, just da, 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 da. straightforward, everything is on the beat. 
and then uh, this, which is, it's, um, it's again, C sharp minor, then, um, and on it you play 5-4-5 five, five on the B string, E string, on 4, then the B string again, on 5, put the pinky, uh, the pinky, the, the, um, the second finger back on again. Again, this is confusing, you try doing this. Okay, this is the melody, again with the bass notes on the beat, um, then G sharp, okay, entire chord, strings 1, 2, 3, and 6, or 2, 3, 4, and 6, okay, sounds better in my opinion, okay, begin from the B string, without the E string, um, and then you do it again, so it's, okay, so let's play it. Mm. playing the, uh, the second time, you've noticed that you don't play this again the second time. You just begin right on the melody, okay? You don't do the intro. Um, okay, melody right away. Um, so um, the, the second time, when you're done with the second time, you're here. And you just continue to play the G sharp uh, chord. This time with the E string. Okay? It's this. Okay? And then you play this. Chromatic movement again. This time, both E strings on 4, 5, 6, and 7. And you begin again from the top. Okay, so it's okay. It's the same notes, an octave down. Pretty smart. Pretty smart com uh, composing. That's why I wanted you to learn this because it's a really, really smart tune. Even though it's it's a simple, it's not simple, but it's a simple blues, it's a simple jazz blues tune, um, and yet it's really smart. It's got everything a jazz blues tune should have. Um, so, uh, you play the uh, the A part again. Now there is a different ending. Instead of instead of the E, uh, the open E string, you play this. Oh, um, excuse me. Okay, play this. It's another form of E7, and it's after the B, the B7 uh, part, the, the B7 lick. This. Okay. 0, 2 on the E string, and then you play this. You take C7, okay, it's C with your pinky on the uh, G string on 3, and you take it up to 7, okay? Your bass note is on 7 because it's E. Again, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, okay? So it's on 7. And, 
Again, chromatic movement, down to four. Okay, seven, six, five, four. Then you pick strings two, three, four, and five. Okay, got it? And then you do the, um, the F sharp minor and B7 line again. And then this again. And then this again. You can do this again if you want. And then you end. Okay? So um, you can do it two times, three times, 17 times if you feel like it. If you have somebody improvising a solo along with you, then you can play it as many times as you want, as long as the solo is interesting. Um, and then there's this ending I created for this. Um, I kind of stole this ending from a Keith Jarrett trio uh, tune. I, I don't remember which standard they play, but um, it's this. <laughs> Okay, it's just another chromatic movement, then 2-5-1 into um, E major, again. Um, the 2-5-1 is um, F sharp 7, then B7, then E. Okay? Now what I did was this. I slide to 4, okay, on both the G and A strings, okay? Um, and then I take both to three, then to two, okay? Got it? And then, actually, if you want, you can do this. You can make it even um, stronger if you do the entire seventh chord. Uh, this seventh triad here. Um, just like uh, the head of C7, just on four instead of three, then back on three, then to two, which means that this is C sharp seven, C7, B7. Okay, again, the chromatic movement. So you can either just outline it and do uh, and play the A and um, G strings. Just play a sixth and, um, and then move on, or you can play the entire uh, chord and make it really strong. Okay, I don't like the strong version, I like the refined. The refined version just hinting at the seventh chord. And then um, the F sharp seven with two on the E bass, two on the, on the D string, and three either with your pinky or the third finger on the G string. You pick all three strings, uh, the E, G, and D strings. And then I pick the open B string. Then B7, I just pick strings A, D, and G. And then I pick the G, D, and E bass strings and I hammer on, I put on the E chord and I hammer on one on the G string. Okay? So it's, okay? It's F sharp seven, B string, B seven, E with a hammer on from zero to one on the G. Okay, so it's, So the ending and you're done with the Leisure Suit Larry theme song. I've enjoyed this very much. You go and download the tab from the website and practice this. But before you do, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. 
I've got a ton of lessons to teach you for free. It will always be free. And um, all I ask in return is for you to share these lessons and just let everybody know about Lick and Riff's existence. I want to teach people guitar. That's my goal in life. So uh, one of my goals in life, it's not my only goal in life, but it's one of the primary goals in life. Uh, otherwise, I won't do this. Um, I won't uh, film um, a 40 minute lesson. Um, if it's 40 minutes long, I, I don't know. Um, 30 minutes. Anyway, go download the tab from the website and have fun with this. And while you're there on the website, there's a donation button. If you want to give something back, everything goes back to Lick and Riff. And I'd be very, very grateful for anything you want to donate. If you want to buy the dogs a biscuit, they'd love it. Um, go practice this. Have fun. Be patient with the Travis picking. It takes time. Every technique takes time. Uh, no music genius uh, became a genius overnight it took a lot of practice i'm not saying i'm a genius i'm saying no music genius in general so any player you see they practiced their asses off okay uh so practice 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 get it under your fingers and you'll get it eventually and you'll play this and you'll be good at it and you'll make your own version and you'll enjoy i'll see you the next lesson thank you very much for watching